good evening one and all we are more nearly more than halfway through our session <clears throat> my voice is a little bit not okay but still bear with me today's aspect as we said about the nursing element um palliative care team ha, like if you say what what are the essential or uh, must components of palliative care if you ask it would be a doctor nurse and a psychosocial element or a social care worker so from that aspect we have an important session today which will cover the psychosocial elements for that we have two people who are going to take us through the the elements which i have mentioned ms ashika george <clears throat> working as a junior social welfare officer in palim india uh, she has experience in organizational skills and she has been trained in manipal medical college and trishur kerala too she has volunteered during covid in covid 19 vaccination camps conducted by the rotary club she is passionate about training and being part of social social care services next is ms rija thomas <clears throat> who is also a social care worker and she is working as a social welfare officer in palim india trivandrum and she has also obtained her experience working in district hospitals and organizations in ernakulam and kol and kolam institute in rehab and psychiatric issues too she has also she also has experience in community field work in under the icds scheme she has also volunteered during the covid-19 uh pandemic in community care and she is also someone who is passionate about social social care and social care services social care is one of the as we say total pain total care total uh, management if you don't cover or look into the psychosocial aspects the care is incomplete so with this i hand over the platform to both of them to take us through the session thank you ma'am thank you so much uh, in this session uh, we are dealing with uh, psychosocial care and good evening all uh, let's move on to the session so uh you are the session yes it is clear and obvious you can go ahead thank you, you can see and hear you too so psychosocial aspects of care moving on to the topics so throughout these sessions you all will be familiar about the definition of palliative care uh, by who so the ultimate aim of palliative care is to improve the quality of life of patients and their families it's not about all the patients the patients and families who are suffering from problems associated with life threatening or life limiting illnesses and what we do is we improve the quality of life of the patients through the prevention of their suffering and providing relief to their suffering it is done by early identification and also by the impeccable assessment which means the faultless Uh, the assessment, which is uh, in accordance with the high standards, and also the treatment for the pain and the other problems that they face, the physical, psychosocial, and spiritual. So the ultimate goal of palliative care is what we do is we improve the quality of life of the patients and their families, those who are suffering problems associated with life-threatening and life-limiting illnesses, 
and what we do is we prevent their suffering and provide relief to their suffering by early identification proper assessment and also treatment to the pain and other problems like physical psychosocial and spiritual so total pain this term was or this concept was introduced by dave sisley saunders the founder of uh, hospice movement so what this mean is that the physical pain that the patient report it's always uh, influenced or compounded by uh, his or her current life circumstances we know that a patient's life is not easy it is surrounded by many problems after the diagnosis and throughout the treatment so it's not always a physical pain that uh, he or she tries to report it is influenced by many other factors in her life and what we do is we arrive at a social diagnosis which means we try to identify the all factors affecting that patient throughout the uh, journey of illness like psychological factors biological factors social and environmental factors and finally we arrive at a social diagnosis for the patient and as we said the illness related suffering it is much more than just a physical distress it's not always a physical distress that the patient faces so the total pain it can be classified into four categories the first one is physical psychological socio economic and spiritual so let's explore more about these four aspects in detail through this session before that let me ask why it's important about psychosocial care in palliative care because as we all know if a patient is living with a life limiting illness uh, like a uh, uh, cancer or a life threatening illness like stroke or paraplegia or the patient is aware that uh, he or she is living only for a few more days or she is he or she is approaching death so in that situation we can know that it will cause unique stressors and challenges to their life because they must be they may be anxious about their death or they may be anxious about uh, the future of uh, their dependents or many other things and they may be having distress regarding their pain so there are multiple stressors and challenges that a patient may suffer if the patient is living with a life limiting or life threatening illness or if the patient is aware that he or she is approaching death so that's where psychosocial care is important in palliative care so a serious illness if a serious illness is present in a patient's life then it will of course it will disturb the patient's thoughts and feelings it will affect the patient's relationships social and spiritual supports financial stability and spirituality and there the importance of psychosocial care arises so the first thing that we do or the first step that we take for the psychosocial care or as part of the psychosocial care services delivery what we do is assessment simply what is assessment it's an exploration process which means we are gathering information from the patient it's not an easy or a simple task we need to acquire accurate information because it is after the assessment based upon the information that we assess we select the goals for the patient and thereby we will select the interventions that we should do in order to achieve these goals which will improve the quality of life of the patient the aim of assessment is we are trying to identify what all are the problem areas the patient is suffering or the patient is facing due to this illness and definitely this problem areas are affecting the well being of the patients and also their families the assessment involves two steps what we do is we collect information uh, about the patient and regarding the patient's family or other necessary areas and we also try to identify and honor the strengths resources and needs of the patient assessment it's an ongoing process because it's not like once we have done an assessment it's over because throughout the treatment procedure the patient's needs might change or the patient's uh, situations might change so assessment is always an ongoing process as we said because the psychosocial needs of the patient and the family or caregivers that might change over the course of illness 
and throughout the assessment what we do is purposeful observation and purposeful con conversations which will uh, lead us to get the proper uh, decisions regarding the patient's treatment procedure so from where we collect information or what all are the sources of information for assessment it could be the patient who is giving us the information that we need for the assessment or it could be the caregiver or maybe the patient is living lonely or sometimes uh, there is no caregiver for the patient we might be getting collateral sources for collecting the information it could be friends it could be relatives or it could be neighbors etc and for assessment we might often go for home visits also if the patient is not able to come with come uh, towards us. so uh, we have said uh, the patient will be having many issues regarding an illness other than physical pain so now let's discuss a case study uh, regarding a patient and let's analyze the patient situation the patient is a 56 year old lady mrs a who has been diagnosed with ca breast in 2016 she has undergone breast removal surgery mastectomy and now she is referred to pain for pain management to the palliative care setting on the first uh, meeting with her uh, she looked very anxious and she reported that she had no idea about what is a palliative care service and she also had other comorbidities like she was diabetic since 12 years she had coronary artery disease she had a fracture on leg due to fall in 2019 and she is a widow and her children are having a hostile relationship with her she lives alone in a rented house so we are taking a minute and please analyze her situation and try to uh, get a idea what all things we should assess about a patient in a general view what all things we should assess about a patient uh, when the patient is arriving for palliative care services so what are the important areas to be assessed from the point of view of total pain so these are the major things that we need to assess as part of assessment in a palliative care service delivery the first one is patient overview then insight family overview socio economic overview psychological overview spiritual overview and based upon these assessment these assessments from these uh, different components we plan uh, patients uh, goals and also the interventions that should be done to achieve those goals let's go on to detail regarding these components of assessment first one is patient overview it includes the name age gender and other uh, basic socio demographic details of the patient and the diagnosis of the patient then insight the awareness of the patient about the illness uh, if the patient is aware about the diagnosis or not about the prognosis and if the patient knows about palliative care sometimes we might uh, meet the patients who is not at all aware about palliative care or sometimes a patient have misconceptions that palliative care is only for uh, end of life care service delivery other than anything else so sometimes we need to address that issues also uh, and if they need about, need to know about palliative care services we might explain about that and regarding pollution if the patient is aware about that patient's diagnosis and prognosis and if the patient is not aware about the patient's diagnosis and prognosis we mark it as pollution positive next is family overview so we will explore the families the following components who is the primary caregiver of the patient it could be uh, his or her father uh, mother uh, spouse uh, uh, or it could be children or relatives any anybody could be the primary caregiver and what all are the uh, like what are the support systems available for the patient sometimes a patient would be uh, having support from uh, the patient's neighbors or it could be the patient's colleagues or it could be the patient's uh, extended family relatives or it could be the patient's friends so what all are the support systems for the patient and the structure of family like whether it is a joint family or a nuclear family and who all are the members of the patient's family and what all are the nature of relationships the patient have sometimes a patient could be so close to one of the particular member of the family or sometimes a patient might have interpersonal relationship issues with some of the family members so we explore that also like we might we should know that if the patient is having someone to support the patient it could be emotionally or it could be financially or 
in any manner. And Xenogram and Ecomap, these are the two tools that we use in regarding the family overview and also for recording the support system of the patient. We will discuss it uh, in detail in the session. Next is socioeconomic overview. We will explore who are the breadwinners in the family. Sometimes there are situations where the patient is the only breadwinner of the family. And after the illness, the patient may be unable to go for a job and the income sources are stopped for the entire family. And there could be other sources of income for the family. So we will explore that also. Maybe uh, anybody is getting uh, in the family like uh, pensions or like any other incentives or something. So we will explore that also. And if the patient is getting any type of community support uh, in his or her locality, then if the patient is uh, included in the government schemes uh, as part of his or her illness, if the patient is having ration card and if it is below poverty line or above poverty line, and we, are, we assess all of that. And if the patient is having any debts or any other financial vulnerabilities. So these all come under socioeconomic overview. Sorry about that. Uh, we are issuing the presentation later. That is subject to Next, we have psychological overview. The patient might be going through deep stage uh, regarding the diagnosis or prognosis or because of the uh, issues uh, that he face or, or she face uh, during the treatment process or the patient might be having depression or anxiety regarding his or her illness. So we also assess that and spiritual overview. Sometimes uh, after the diagnosis or pro after av being aware of the prognosis or if the patient is going to the treatment procedure, the patient will be suffering a lot and the patient will be like, <clears throat> What is the purpose of my life or why should I exist? I'm becoming a burden for my family or my caregiver is struggling a lot uh, because of her caregiving role or because of his caregiving role. And what is the meaning of my life? Uh, like I'm living a meaningless life and maybe the patient is very um, hopeless in his or her condition. And there is always a question, why me? There are many others. I have, uh, haven't done anything harm or wrong to anyone. And why God has given uh, this fate to me? These all are the thoughts that goes uh, throughout uh, the patient's uh, mind uh, during this condition. And sometimes the patient will be denying uh, the patient's illness. Like uh, he or she might be not able to accept that they are having this issue or they are having this diagnosis. So we assess the spiritual overview also. Hi everyone, uh, myself Rija Thomas, working as a medical social worker in Palem, India. Uh, and I'm mostly involved in IP units. So now we will be discussing about genogram. So basically, uh, basically genogram able to, uh, Genogram will be get to know that how the family structure with the family or the family members. So Murray Bowen invented the concept of the genogram as part of his family system model in the 1970s. Genogram were later developed and popularized in clinical settings by Monica Mac Goldrick and Randy Jerson through the publication of a book titled Genograms, Assessment and Intervention in 1985. confirm if uh, it is audible because we are seeing multiple comments in the chat that it's not audible. Yeah, one one slide or something for one I it was ah, there that uh, oh, yeah, okay. so then the one the slide was there. No no it was there I was about to unmute and uh, convey it but then I started hearing that's why I then interviewed 
I think it was just for um for a, for a minute or so, and then it became all right. I think that's the same view by all. If just give us a minute, dear. Dr. Swati has come. Okay, they have confirmed the Ah, yes, exactly. Thank you. That's why I didn't intervene. Ah, go ahead. Go ahead. Ma'am, shall we resume from there? Ah, yes, yes. From here itself, it's fine. Only okay. like. And that psychosocial to that spiritual no that slide when you came that slide is when that uh, in between maybe you were muted or something and then it became all right that's all it's okay go ahead go ahead from here itself okay we've been hearing it okay so uh why it is important ma'am is it audible yes oh. yes go ahead uh, go oh. ahead so uh Next, we will be discussing about why it is important. So, it mainly give a visual representation of a person's family members. That is a uh, dynamic, there is hereditary patterns of a behavior, medical and psychological factors. And that is uh, three or more generation, depending on how much information you can gather about the family. So mostly that include their grandparents, parents, spouses, siblings, children, and so on. So genograms do not usually look at the same for prolonged period as they are designed to describe the current relationship of a member with the rest of the family. They really tend to change after a year or so on. So it's uh, mainly understand the family relationship, their dynamics, and how the support system is getting uh, within the family members and so on. So uh, now genogram uh, are used by professionals for the following purposes. To identify possible medical and psychological risk, fa uh, risk fa uh, factors. Uh, so there are psychological risk factors include that is anxiety, suicidal ideation, depression. And uh, researchers use genogram to spot recurring patterns and correlated elements on how individuals from different generation behave. Also, it understands the relationship dynamics, influences, and support system. Now, we will be talking about the basic symbol. So, uh, these are the ones uh, which indicate the male indicates the uh, square and the circle indicates the female. So, it's unknown gender. These are the ones, uh, the basic symbols. <laughs> and this indicates that is married, separated, uh, divorce, that is last one is love affair. Uh, so uh, we can see that uh, it is joined means married and the slash line is means separated and the double slash means uh, uh, divorce and the last one is love affair. Now uh, this also indicate that is adopted, uh, twins, engaged, cohabitation and separation. And these are the uh, psychological indication uh, that is death, psychological illness, suspected illness, pregnancy. Uh, we mostly know that there are in a family, maybe there are uh, uh, illness or diseases in the family itself. So what we do that, what we will do, uh, there are uh, in our pallium India, uh, there are, uh, our patient that is, uh, bar, uh, what we indicate is that arrow, which uh, make, uh, mark the arrow, it is our patient. And rest of the diseases, that is only striped line, it shows the illness. So uh, we are making the arrow, that is our patient, and the rest two others are miscarriage and abortion. Now, uh, the emotional relationship, that is hostile. Uh, genogram mainly and uh, get to know their how the relationship between the family members so it is a hostile relation or the violence the distant or poor intimacy or very poor uh, very close so it, uh, it it is not necessary to write the story by through understanding the genogram we are able to get to how the families are bonding or the relationship between uh, family members with the patient so these are the ones, emotional abuse, sexual abuse, neglect or abuse, controlling. Uh, so do you understood about the air genogram? Any doubts or anything like that, please uh, 
ഇക്കോമാപ്പിസ്റ്റിവിഷ്വലൈസ്യൂഷ്യൽ So, ECOMAP is mainly showing the, how support systems are involved in the community or how, uh, there are many, uh, uh, how all our peoples are care for their patient. So, it is mainly about the resource where we are getting. Next, we... Uh, so, uh, this is the ECOMAP. so in the middle one is family unit or the patient which are connected with the neighbors the neighbors means they will uh, some neighbors will get uh, neighbors uh, help them and the workplace system government services through the panchayat or any schemes and government community services and religious institution there are many religious institutions like church uh, the many ones who are uh, helping them for the uh, Uh, economic status so there are many friends clubs school volunteers is the main part of this system through the volunteer we get to know vulnerable patients and etc and the health services so we will be showing the example of uh, eco map so uh, this is the example of uh, ecoma that is patient family it is in the middle part and the rest of that is religion grocery shop uh, friends colleagues relatives so this uh, this is the main to get how much they are connected with the community or how much they are the how people are caring for the patient and the family and we all get to know the, how their relationship that is normal or very close distant or poor neglect violence emotional abuse so this is the eco map we uh, concept of eco map now uh, we discuss about the case of miss a so this are the assessment that par uh, all parameters we uh, uh, means concepted we listed out there are four we discussed them physical psychological socio economic and spiritual so in physical Uh, the uh, miss a as a fatigue lack of sleep is the main issue for her so difficulty in walking body image issue so these are the physical one and the psychological issue is uh, she is living alone so isolation feel big uh, is the main part and the emotionally weak uh, anxiety about future she is more worried about future what will be happening because only i i already told she is alone and unclear about her prognosis and palliative care uh, distress due to multiple illness so uh, this is a psychological issues and if we go to the socio economic part she is strained relationship with the family uh, unable to go for a job so if the uh, uh, patient is a primary uh, primary breadwinner and she became the uh, bedridden so she or may, uh, he will be uh, lost their job so they may, uh, they may require financial instability and the house rent uh, she may not uh, pay the rent so that uh, i told that the uh, ecoma the religions so the religions are supporting for her as a 1000 rupees and low accessibility to hospital uh, absence of caregiver and support absence of caregiver and support system shows uh, see uh, she is living in a, uh, a rural area and there is no support system she is getting so it may these are the four ones which uh, included all we listed out now uh, what are the social impact this also we listed out from the uh, cases so first uh, we will know that social isolation is the main part uh and dependency there are many patients like traumatic paraplegia patients are mostly dependent on the spouse or uh, daughter 
so uh, their mind feels that they want to depend so their dependency is the main part financial in instability if uh, if the uh, i already told that if the patient as a primary breadwinner and they uh, she or she became a uh, bedridden so there is a financial stability may be, be occur lack of social support debt that means uh, due to the treatment expenses or due to any other uh, uh, expenses it may occur the debt loss of work interpersonal issues and inadequate facilities and these are the pos uh, possible social impact now we will be discussing about possible psychological impact uh, if uh, our family members become a, any sick or dis any uh, sick or disease we first feel like shocking news or uncertainty there is why hopelessness in our mind also we uh, get to uh, what is this the first one is shocking and anticipate anticipatory grief uh, and the poor insight regarding illness anxiety suicidal ideation uh, so i there are many patients in the ip there are uh, they or some suicidal ideation because uh, they dependent on some others so uh, they they, they uh, think about there is no use in the life so they get to uh, they may uh, maybe uh, get uh, suicidal ideation so poor coping with the illness so psychosocial and spiritual suffering is a real but can be difficult to recognize and treat this can manifest as physical complaints now vulnerable population as there are many uh, vulnerable cases this uh, this one we want to give a importance or we want to care the those patients or the families that when uh, is living alone so uh, elderly without support so we give, want to give the those patients means i uh, get to vulnerable population and uh, give them uh, more, more care and give them importance so multiple patients in family victims of gender issues like domestic violence physical verbal psychological and sexual harassment individual with mental health issues individual with suicidal ideation socially isolated substance users in a family individuals in extreme poverty so these are the vulnerable population which are listed here so we give uh, we want to give them more care and support for them now uh, caregiver caregiver is the main part of this uh, uh, institution there are in the hospital setting it is must be not uh, avoid bystander calling uh, give them respect so there are uh, rosaline cater give the quotes there are only four kinds of people in the world those who have been caregivers those who are currently caregivers those who will be caregivers and those will be a caregiver so respect respect those individual because uh, they are the ones who are uh, sacrificing his or her life to the patient the family member so avoid calling bystander respect and give them a mutual uh, respect to that caregiver also so never de uh, dehumanize them by calling them bystander what do i need to know about you to help you better because it's a palliative care setting and what we do here is not something uh, what uh, people uh, professionals do in a uh, ordinary hospital setting it's not a fault because in palliative care we treat a set of patients and they and they need much more care and here is a visual of uh, one of our patients uh, he had a severe uh, life threatening illness and he was approaching his death and during his last days uh, there came their uh, wedding anniversary and he had a wish that he need to celebrate it in the hospital with his wife and he expressed his wish uh, towards our team and we uh, we helped him for that and we celebrated uh, their wedding anniversary and both of them were happy even in that struggling situation and after the celebration within a few days he passed away so what we did here is not a great gesture but it made them so happy even in that uh, grief situation so in a palliative care setting we must always address the patient psychosocial issues concerns and needs and it will make great changes in their life so what are all the interventions that we can do in a palliative care setting 
it could be like providing information sometimes what the patient need us information and they are not aware about that and we could be the information providers licensing we connect them to the appropriate required resources that they need at that particular time as a third person we facilitate some services for their betterment and rehabilitation it is one of the major part of palliative care setting because sometimes after providing many services the patient might get a feeling that we are so dependent on us or uh, i can't do anything of my own so what we do is we assess the interests and also the capabilities of the patient and provide appropriate rehabilitation it could be a vocational rehabilitation also or it could be the uh, we are trying to make them uh, improve their uh, previous skills or we try to achieve their ma maximum possible capabilities that they had before the illness so it will uh, reduce the thought of dependency on the patients and then we provide bereavement support uh, for the patients uh, family members and also we follow up our patients uh, regarding their issues and concerns we provide supportive counseling for the patients uh, at the time of diagnosis or uh, during the time they are aware about the prognosis or uh, if they are uh, if we are breaking the bad news also they might be needing uh, counseling and throughout the treatment process and maybe they are having distress due to pain or many other issues so we provide supportive counseling and sometimes what we do is psychoeducation we psychoeducate the patient and the family members about the illness or it could be a caregiver education and many other aspects so these all are the major interventions that we do in a palliative care setting as a social worker or these are the major interventions that should be known by the palliative care professionals in a palliative care setting these are the vocational rehabilitation services that we have provided based upon the needs and uh, capabilities and also <clears throat> the abilities of the patient uh, we provide various types of uh, vocational rehabilitation uh, to the uh, patients and their caregivers sometimes the patient uh, was the only breadwinner of the family uh, maybe the patient uh, have been passed away or maybe the patient is not in a condition to do anything uh, on their own so we provide uh, various kind of uh, vocational rehabilitation to the patients and their uh, caregivers uh, it was uh, we have provided uh, goats or poultry uh, etc uh, for some uh, patients and families and like other thing is candle making uh, providing uh, sewing machines for them and we provide training for umbrella making and uh, provide funds for uh, its investment and all and these are some of their uh, pictures these are done by our team and now let's see a video so that explain how uh, we do interventions in a, in the life of our patients and next uh, we can see uh, the support we provide for children it is both educational or emotional aspects also uh, sometimes uh, we don't address the issues of patients in the general setting like maybe the as i said maybe the patient was the only uh, breadwinner of the family and the students uh, the his uh, or her children maybe uh, were studying in a very reputed school uh, and suddenly the income has stopped and what happens to the rest uh, what happens to the children's education it's a major question sometimes uh, the children may be forced to uh, go for jobs by dropping their education or sometimes they might be uh, forced to change their schools because of uh, the education education uh, expenses and in that setting what we provide is we provide education support for the needy patients uh, students and also we provide emotional support for them uh, in our setting we provide uh, volunteers who are the mentors for the children and we try to listen to them uh, also their concerns uh in our setting what we do is we arrange a summer camp uh, for the students and in uh, in my personal experience what i uh, heard was uh, what i heard was that uh, in our uh, recent summer camp after the summer camp uh, this, we had a trip for the students uh, to lulu mall uh, trivandrum and we had a movie together and one uh, more than three kids has mentioned that they had never seen a movie so uh, like they have never seen a movie in the theater so what i understand is that the 
experience. Children, many children uh, where uh, they have uh, parents or they are important family members as uh, patients in their families, they are denied many uh, pleasures that they are supposed to enjoy in their life during this period. So we were so happy to hear that uh, they were happy about such experiences. So many of the uh, beautiful moments of uh, children are denied due to an illness in their family. So we always try to address that part also. And what we need to always remember is that we must always evaluate our interventions that we provide to improve the quality of life of the patient and the families. We must assess how they are benefited, in what all ways they are benefited by our interventions. And we need to uh, revise and update our assessments because throughout the treatment, the patient may not be having the same needs or the patient may not be having, uh, may not be in the same current situ same situations and the patient may have many other uh, updations to the treatment. So throughout the treatment process, we need to revise and update our assessments. And maybe uh, the patient might raise a state of independency, but also sometimes they need our help. So we must be there to reach out for help if they require that. And there is an art and science in psychosocial care, just as in MOOCs. So we must be able to utilize it to bring qualitative changes in the life of our patients. And now we will show you uh, a sample of our genogram and eco map. So this is the case we discussed about Miss A. Uh, so through this genogram, we know that there is three, uh, three generation. The uh, three generation or uh, so. The square means that is the patient passed, uh, the parents, the father and mother are passed away and uh, they are married and they have two children. The elder one is Mr. B and he also uh, passed away. The younger one is Miss A. So she is our patient and we mark a big circle. That means the patient is living alone and there is no one in her, uh, in her house. So uh, she also married and her husband uh, passed away. That is Mr. A. And uh, she has two children. That is Mr. C and Miss D. They are also married. So the red line symbol means that uh, red line, it indicates that there are hostile relationship between, uh, that exists between the children, Miss A and Miss, the two both children. So, Miss A and Mr. B, say there are thin line shows that there is no strong relationship, but uh, there is little bit uh, relationship is there, but no, there is not strong. So, this is the genogram. Uh, we are uh, uh, means we are doing the genogram from this institution. Uh, now we will be showing the echo map example. So, Miss uh, A has the supporting system like a public health center. And the church, I already told that the church members are supporting her uh, like 1,000 per uh, her month. And she uh, do not have any uh, source of income. So church are helping her. And the neighbors, uh, they're a hostel, means uh, she's shifting to another places. So there is a uh, relationship between the neighbors. There is not that much bonding. So uh, that is a reason. And the panchayat there is a little bit the help is getting from there and the palliative care. So she came here and she get the maximum, uh, she get the um, support and the pain management and all this is the echo map example. So thank you all. Uh, now, if you have any questions or doubt, you can feel to us. Thank you to both of you. You have took us through all the elements and um, given sufficient examples with case um, scenarios. There is one question in the chat box. Um, they've asked whether uh, genogram and pedigree chart are the same or different. It's actually different and uh, we are not so familiar with pedigree chart. But in genogram, what we do is we try to uh, record at least three generations of the patient's family 
and we also record the age of the family members, their occupation, and sometimes it could be a hereditary illness because uh, the patient might report that my father had cancer, uh, my brother had cancer, my sister had cancer, the patient is also a cancer patient. And we also record uh, who all are staying or living together with the patient. And if there are any uh, sort of psychiatric illness existing in the family. So uh, it's not same as pedigree chart. It's different from pedigree chart. Thank you, dear. You're going in more detail with it so that you get more information. Yes, Hope uh, that has uh, answered the query for uh, Dr. Usha. Yes, thank you. So basically, like uh, any of you, you have any queries, you can either type on the chat or unmute and ask also either way is fine before that i just wanted like see um from the main one of your slide which showed what are the ways and means how um help can be provided by the psychosocial team the first two elements itself you had many elements Awareness and connecting them, those two itself can play a very big role. That is what I wanted to reiterate. Many, many times, no patients are not aware of what their disease is um, because they, they themselves may not know and they may know it. They may know it in the wrong sense. Sometimes, like many people think all bad about it only. So, aware, raising awareness about their disease their prognosis in a graded manner not on day one telling them everything so that's why these elements the psychosocial aspect of uh, managing itself takes a long way you have to be patient and give them more time the first setting they may be so scared they may not open up or anything like that so one or two sittings will take just to gain rapport and for them to feel comfortable and then you start giving this awareness education and then they will open up and tell you and there you have to clarify their doubts queries and give them the proper information next is regarding connecting you 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 need not be in a situation to help everyone because that may not be possible so if you for example you have someone who has the need and there may be someone who is willing to help you just connect the two so that is what helps and uh, goes a very, very long way. For example, education is a very simple example. Okay? There are so many who want to help children in their education. It could be a social group. as That is why they showed that very good example. And why I'm telling education is many people out in the world want to help for education. They want to help, but they don't know whom to help because they don't know whether that person is genuine and things like that. So where, when you have a situation, you have patients who need the help and support, you just connect them to the person who is willing to provide. So, so that second element, being able to connect is something which will be very helpful. And both are benefited in that way. They are happy that they're able to help someone. The, the, um, the person who needs it also benefits. So that is something in that, in that, picture you have you had other things like uh, rehabilitation uh, uh, pain management multiple elements are there but the first two things go a long way and uh, it is simple um, we need not think that the whole element of psychosocial is a difficult thing it is something uh, just going out of the box and uh, as being professionals we may not be aware of so just linking there are many such groups available now. Uh, these type of groups come and meet. Um, you can arrange uh, for those groups to come into the hospital once a month or something like that. So in most of the institutions, like for example, palliative care itself is mainly as two elements, inpatient or home-based care. In many of the inpatient setups, you have a medical team 
um, nursing team and a psychosocial uh, team. So that team will have the links with all it. That's why, as I said, without these three elements, palliative care is incomplete. So basically, in the in the few years that I have been working, these links are there in all these inpatient uh, setups. So another thing is that they come into the organization once a month or they ask, they keep co constant touch with them. And so many such teams are there who are willing to help. And if you are just a link person for that, and then the benefit is obtained by the patient, caregiver, or whoever needs it. So that is what I wanted to um, reinforce, that it is not difficult, it is simple, it can be obtained and achieved. Anything more anybody wants to bring up? Even some some issue which someone has faced and wants to clarify or something like that, you can unmute and explain or don't think that, oh, this is very simple or uh, stupid, something like that. Nothing like that. Everything is worth discussing and obtaining a solution. <coughs> we don't have a case discussion today. Sri Priya, is that right? Yes, ma'am. Doctor, uh, one doctor mm. sent in, but uh, she is presently at field in her duty. No, home. She is working, and so she's unable to do the case. The comprehensive topic, uh, we thought that just reading out the case won't be that good. Mm. Because apart from the medical aspects, uh, many psychosocial aspects are much important in case discussion. So. Oh, yes, we mean uh, need to ask her a few more queries to find out in depth what are the issues. So anyone who has something uh, can bring up also, not necessary. It, see, having uh, uh, gone through the whole um, psychosocial elements today, so uh, something which comes up to your mind, you can bring that up too. From all what you've seen, anything that um, comes to your mind, please, um, if you could say, and then we can take it forward and discuss also. Thanks, Captain, sir. The medical professionals are immersed in prescriptions, medicines, procedures that they at times, uh, even though unaware, you want to notice the uh, psychosocial aspects. Maybe sessions like these can help you to realize that and then maybe inculcate those, these practices in your consultation in the future. See, and as she mentioned, that loneliness and helplessness is very, very important. There, the psychological uh, team, clinical psychology has a big role to play because um, just clearing that, in one of your video, the lady who, lo who lost her son and had, the, had to look after a ailing her husband, what did she say? Just the word that we are here for you. You can call us anytime. She said that is what gave her all the con. Anyone in that situation, she can be depressed, uh, feel uh, she's alone by herself. Her husband is in a state where he can't look after himself. So these situations, depression and uh, situations pushing your emotion to the lowest point is very much possible. So at that point of time, um, the uh, psychosocial support, and then these one or two words does matter a lot. So in those situations, how are you going to keep? That's why even 
palliative care definition itself in the last few years who has said the caregiver also has an important role is main palliative care is is to make sure that all symptomatic care is done even though cure is not possible care is provided at all levels and also the caregiver has to be looked after if you are providing only care for the patient and not for the caregiver there also it's incomplete so the caregiver has an important role because the caregiver is one who is going to survive even after the <coughs> the patient may not be alive so the caregiver is so important looking after the caregiver is is so the who definition includes the caregiver also in the palliative care definition But if you will allow, I will just uh, try to uh, say a situation which I had personally experienced that maybe the uh, our participants how they can practice. So I I'm just uh, trying. Rather than if I have a voice, <laughs> go ahead, Dasri Priya. Anyone like see that you go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. So I hope everyone is listening. This is just a situation you can uh, just uh, visualize that. A double story house, uh, paka house, not a shack or something, paka house. And uh, when you enter, you are seeing uh, the hall is full of uh, toys, which depicts that there are kids in the house. And uh, once you see the bedroom, there are two small kids sleeping. One is seven years old, the other is two years old. Those two kids are sleeping. Once you advance to the next bedroom, you see a woman, a woman who is past her middle age. Maybe we can say around 60, 65 years. She's having a serious health related something. I'm not a medical person, so I'm not using the exact term. She's having, a, she's also cataract right? Now, uh, the medical person is uh, focusing on uh, dressing the woman, changing the tube and all. Uh, then we come across the caregiver who is a young lady, obviously the mother of the two kids. And one specific comment which she made during the interaction was that everything is well. Uh, uh, the lady who is the patient is being taken care of. The only thing is that she keeps throwing clothes out of the window during night time. Late night, she throws out the clothes which is kept in the room over the outside through the window. Nothing medical I have said till now. So what are the problems you are seeing here? Any quick thoughts in your minds when you hear this much? Maybe we should give them a couple of seconds to like the respond. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Yes. I'm a, am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Uh, did you say the patient was throwing clothes out of the window? At late night. Okay. Maybe during midnight. Then, we will need to ask little further details about the complaint because even though it may not seem very medically pertinent, it is clearly an abnormal behavior. We won't expect all patients that we come across to do that. Mm -hmm. so, Thank you, Dr. Ankama. Uh, the first thing which I personally felt was uh, maybe it could seem very silly to you all that the particular lady, the caregiver, was not having peaceful sleep at nights because she was worried. The patient, of course, used to throw anything, let it be clothes, let it be any variable, was throwing things at late night only because she was not sleeping. Am I audible, Dr. Gurinder, now? And uh, during daytime, when she is having two young kids to take care of, 
that also depends on of the uh, usual rest rest time because whenever she feels tired she can't bleed out the kids will be bothering her obviously because they don't know the situation at home right so that is how we common people uh, people like me the lay people think about such aspects I just, thought, I just thought of adding one more thing. See, when something like this happens, neighbors can complain. Second. Because mm, that is another thing you have to be aware of. Uh, because I remember even this, like when we go for some home, home visit and things, see, because sometimes patients in pain or distress or agony, what happens through the day, they may be okay. At night, they may make some noises, sounds and things which neighbors may complain. So like that, it is very common. So that is something for this issue, what she said, when something like that happens, where if she's throwing it out and the, there may be a next house nearby, so they may not like it. So issues may be raised by neighbors too. So these are things which you have to be aware. So this is a very good thing. Each one looks at it at a different angle. Uh, so, as Dr. Anupama mentioned, we have to go in detail what is, uh, uh, what's her ailment and things, whether she has some um, instability in her central nervous system, she's not cognitive, so she's not knowing what she is doing. So, those elements are also there to go in detail. This, we are looking only at the psychosocial aspect of it. So, from that point of view, what are we thinking? We will go, like, when the case what she's mentioned, it will be dealt with in detail. See, as we saw in the whole, whenever you see total, the physical, uh, medical, all things will come in one part. Then you have the emotional, then you have the uh, uh, spiritual, psychological, everything is there. So like that, each one. But from this point of view, this complaint from the neighbors is very much bound to be there, which has to be done. I think... Um, you wanted to say something, go ahead. Because when I was mentioning, uh, uh, you came up to say something. Please go ahead, dear. I, I thought Shija or someone wanted to say something. That's why, please go ahead. Did, did either of you want to say something regarding what uh, Sri Priya mentioned? Add on something for that case. What are the issues or anything like that? Please go ahead. Sometimes I get the feeling that we do not address the caregivers' issues much. That's what I thought about this. Because uh, sometimes uh, the caregiver must be in such a distressful situation. Uh, but what others do is they never support her and also they question. Like is she's not efficient in providing the caregiving, or they question her efficiency in caregiving. I have met with the patient's uh, caregiver uh, from Medical College Trivandrum, and the patient is completely paralyzed and unconscious for the past four years. Uh, it was a drunken drive, and uh, he got uh, paralyzed and he is unconscious. The lady is uh, very young, and she got married very uh, early, and she hasn't completed her graduation also. And she's very uh, struggling very hard with uh, the life because uh, she had a son. Uh, her uh, father-in-law and mother-in-law are not uh, so much uh, ha having close relationship with her. They are very hostile to her. And her father-in-law is also a drunkard. And she's worried about the model that her son is uh, seeing. Like uh, he is seeing a drunkard uh, grandfather and going. That disturbs her. And she was not having a happy married life. That's what I understood from her thoughts. And now she's having a great uh, grief that she's dependent on others' help. The helps are getting reduced because it has been four years. And uh, what her family is also telling is that you try to go for a job, we could not support you uh, any longer or dismiss as we have done before. So a, a lady who is not even a graduate in this, uh, in this era, she's trying, struggling hard for getting a good job. There could be jobs, but she cannot get a job that will be able, that job might not able to uh, afford the, at least the treatment expenses at all. 
so she is struggling hard and what she said is that she is having this much distress and now also she faced uh, the questions of she is not efficient in caregiving or she is not sincerely caregiving her husband they are not trying to address the caregiver's issues and i asked how are you trying to manage this and she told that i can't share my distress to my family uh, his family is not supportive i keep it on my mind so i told her how could you manage this or how long could you manage this and she said i don't know and what i said is that if you need someone to hear please feel free to contact the palm india volunteers or the palm india social officers because that's only what we can do for her and we told her that if she is planning for any vocational rehabilitation or any other things we will support you please don't worry about that and we told that we will do the needful so what i think is that it's easy to question you are not caregiving uh, you are uh, Uh, your patient uh, so efficiently but they are not addressing what all distresses caregiver is going through totally true dear see she being a caregiver itself is beyond see she was she you mentioned that she did not have a even a decent life okay but she has put that aside and she is looking after him that itself is beyond what she needs to do but yes. on top of that if she is going to be ill treated or said that she is inefficient how on earth anyone would feel so that's what that is like many things in from your video no women are the main caregivers women go through so many things so they have to come up and thank god for palium which is um uh, at least supportive see so many of them feel even if someone says there i am there for you you just give us a call that 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 plays like boundless uh, support and satisfaction and see when someone is in despair just one word is sufficient to help them to hold on and come up so those type of situations are that so that's why as i said no it could be something very simple but explaining and pondering into it is what will uh, throw light and um, make things more clear thank you dear it's it's worth explaining and uh, go, going through case scenarios that is why i say no to every uh, batch i keep telling uh, it is worth the, the whole course will be incomplete if you don't do hands on so you have to be in a place where they provide all these services to see minimum 5 days or 10 days to see to believe once you see and then you will never forget and all this 20 sessions will have equal representation or more uh, by uh, seeing the hands on be it pain management so you will see how it is done how we fashion and see the smile or relief in the patient eyes so for example and all these social and um, psychological issues when you go to the field and see patients there you will see exactly what's happening uh, what what a house has minimum there like what are the um, rehab measures which are needed uh, some how there may not be any site support what can be done to help or make that patient's life better so everything so all elements will be covered so that's what the uh, knowledge plus the physical experience together is what will give the confidence and uh, complete as we say that will be complete palliative care information and for that matter palim india does as we always say every day they have seven home care teams going out so everything is covered in that so at least if like if you all can make it to palim or to the regional centers which will be provided to you which at least few centers are there for the whole of india where you could go and have hands on training so both together will only make it complete i'll just check in the chat box if anything else is there
there's nothing else in the chat box there. Sri Priya, then in that case, I'm going to pass it on to you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, uh, Ashika and Richa, for joining us on this wonderful evening and uh, taking us uh, very extensively through that uh, psychosocial elements in palliative care. Thank you, everyone, for joining in. And with the promise that we will meet again in the next session with another different topic and another eminent faculty. This is Sri Priya, along with Ms. Ashka George, Ms. Rija Thomas, and Dr. Tata Vengadeshwar, and more from the tips report. See you in the next session. Till then, everyone. Take care. Thank you, Ashika and Rija. Amazing. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.